up? It's Richie here with Statifying Football. This is the week four college football previews. These are the noon games. Start with Georgia and Vanderbilt. Georgia beat South Carolina 40 to 13. JT Daniels 303 passing, three touchdowns. They put up 491 yards of offense. They turned it over three times. That shouldn't hurt them against Vanderbilt, but they got to clean that up going forward. Vanderbilt, they lost to Sanford 41-23. They actually kept it close for a good chunk of the game. Uh, Ken Seals, 16 of 37, 121 pick. Rocco Griffin had a nice game, 107 rushing yards. They did run for 247 yards, so if they want to upset Georgia, they got to try to get that run game going again, keep Georgia off the field, but I'm not sure that they'll be able to keep up with Georgia. I got Georgia winning that one. All right, Villanova and Penn State. Penn State had a really good win against Auburn, 28 to 20. Sean Clifford, 280 passing, two touchdowns and a pick. Jahan Dotson, 10 catches for 78 yards and a touchdown. They should make quick work of Villanova. Uh, Notre Dame, Wisconsin. This will be one of the games of the weekend. Notre Dame. They beat Purdue, 27 to 13. They were okay. Jack Cohn was only 15 to 30, 223 passing and two touchdowns. Avery Davis had five catches, 120 and a touchdown. Wisconsin, they're coming off a of bye week. A couple of weeks ago, they beat Eastern Michigan, 34 to 7. Graham Mertz was 14 to 17, 141. Uh, Ch Ches Malusi ran for 144 and a touchdown. They put they put up 518 yards of offense and only allowed 92 total yards. This should be a pretty close game, kind of a low scoring game. Um, this I'm kind of going back and forth on because I'm not super impressed by both teams. Both quarterbacks are they can they can light it up. They can be okay. Uh, both running backs are good. Both defenses are pretty good. Um, I'm gonna give Wisconsin a, a slight a slight edge, a slight win here just because of their uh, their defense. All right, then you got LSU and Mississippi State. This could be pretty high scoring. LSU beat Central Michigan 49-21. Max Johnson, 372 passing, five touchdowns. Deion Smith, five catches, 135, and two touchdowns. Defensively, they had five sacks and had a fumble return for a touchdown. Mississippi State, they lost in a nail-biter to Memphis, 31-29. Will Rogers was 50 of 67 for 419 yards and three touchdowns. Mekhi Polk, 11 catches, 136 and a touchdown. Uh, I think LSU wants revenge. They lost, um, they were upset big time last year in the opener against Mississippi State. I think LSU will be ready for that offense now. I'm gonna say LSU gets revenge on Mississippi State, but this should be a pretty fun, high scoring game. The ball will be in the air a lot of times. Expect a lot of passing, a lot of passing touchdowns. All right, Missouri and Boston College. Missouri made quick work of Southeastern Missouri, 59-28. It was 52-7 going into the fourth quarter. Connor Basilak, 346, three touchdown passes. They had 675 total yards. Boston College did fine against Temple, 28-3. Their quarter, quarterback, Phil Jerkovic, he was hurt, and he may be out for the season. Dennis Grosso wasn't very good passing. Only 59 yards, one touchdown, one pick. He did run for 40 yards and a touchdown. And defensively, they had four sacks. Without Dracovic, though, I don't think they'll be able to keep up with Missouri. I got Missouri winning and maybe winning pretty big. All right, Florida International and Central Michigan. Florida International lost to Texas Tech 54-21. to Max Bortenschlager, 12-27, 185, two touchdowns and a pick. Central Michigan, they lost to LSU 49-21. Uh, Jacob Sermon, 156 packs passing one touchdown, one pick. Dan Richardson, 8 of 15, 72 yards and a touchdown. Ja'Cory Sullivan had a good game, five catches, 114 and a touchdown. They had a pick six defensively. I think Central Michigan, Central Michigan did, they played, uh, they played Missouri tough and almost beat them, and they played LSU kind of tough for a little bit, but I think they should, should be too strong for, for the FIU Panthers to handle. All right, New Hampshire and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh lost. They were up, kind of upset by the MAC team, Western Michigan, 44-41. Kenny Pickett, though, 382 passing, six touchdown passes, and added 54 rushing yards. Jordan Addison, six catches, 124 yards, and three touchdowns. Jared Wayne, five catches, 100 yards. They put up 513 yards of offense. They turned it over three times, which is what hurt them against a really good offense in Western Michigan. They should have no trouble. I, can't, I feel kind of sorry for New Hampshire. Uh, Pittsburgh should put it on them. All right, Richmond and Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech lost to West West Virginia 27-21. They were down 27-7 for most of the game, and they came back late. Uh, Braxton Burmeister, 223 passing and two touchdowns, and they should be, be able to take care, bounce back, and beat Richmond. 
All right, Bowling Green in Minnesota. Bowling Green beat Murray State 27-10. Matt McDonald, 221 passing, one touchdown, one pick, plus one rushing. Minnesota, they did whatever they wanted against Colorado, 30 to nothing. Tanner Morgan, 164 passing. Trayson Potts filling in well for Mohamed Ibrahim. Ibrahim got hurt against Ohio State. He's missing the game. Potts, the last two games, has gone over 100 rushing yards. He had 121 and three touchdowns. Defensively, they had four sacks and only allowed 63 total yards to Colorado. I think Minnesota should be able to take care of Bowling Green pretty easily. All right, Ohio and Northwestern, both teams underperforming this year. Ohio, they lost to Louisiana Lafayette 49-14. Curtis Work, 122 and two touchdowns. That's about all they had. Northwestern, they lost the final score. They lost to Duke 30-23, to but they were down 30 to nothing at one point in this game. Uh, they had two quarterbacks playing. Hunter Johnson started, but he was pretty terrible. 6 of 16, 75 yards, 3 interceptions. Andrew Marty came in, played well, almost brought them all the way back. He had 151 passing, 2 touchdowns. They turned it over 5 times, which did not help in that game. They did force 3 turnovers. Um, but I think Northwestern should be able to bounce back and get a decent win over Ohio. All right, SMU and TCU, this should be pretty high scoring. SMU won on a Hail Mary pass against Louisiana Tech to win 39-37. Tanner Mordecai, 395 passing, 5 touchdown passes, plus 51 rushing yards. Grant Calcaterra, 70 catches, 103 yards. They had 578 yards of offense. TCU, they're coming off a bye week a couple of weeks ago. They, they won a, a fun shootout against Cal, 34-32. Max Dugan, 234 passing, 3 touchdowns, plus 71 rushing and 1 rushing touchdown. Zach Evans ran for 190 in a touchdown. They had 505 yards of offense. Like I said, I think this will be a fun game. This should be a shootout. Uh, I'm kind of going back and forth here. I'm kind of leading TCU. But SMU's, I don't know, they, they've looked really, really good. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll go SMU uh, in, this, in this game. All right, Texas Tech and Texas, possibly another shootout. Texas Tech, they beat Florida International 54-21. Tyler Shue, 399 passing, four touchdown passes. Kaylin Geiger, six catches, 121. They put a 584 on offense. They had a pick six on defense. Texas did whatever they wanted against Rice, 58 to nothing. Casey Thompson, 15 of 18, 164, two touchdowns. B. John Robinson ran for 127 and three touchdowns. Dude, Roshan Johnson ran for 112 and a touchdown on only three carries. They put up 620 yards of offense. This will be a fun game going back and forth. I do think Texas will be the one to score in the end. They might have to score a field goal or a touchdown late with seconds left maybe to win, but I got Texas winning that one. All right, Wagner and Temple. Temple lost to Boston College 28-3. Justin Lynch was okay, 161 passing plus 27 rushing yards. Otherwise, they didn't really get much going on offense. They should be able to do something, though, against Wagner, at least come out with a victory. Miami of Ohio and Army. Miami of Ohio looked good against Long Island, 42 to 7. Brett Gabbert, 171 passing, two touchdowns plus 45 rushing yards. AJ Meyer was 8 of 9 for 123 and a touchdown. They put up 523 on offense. They had four sacks defensively. They'll be facing a really good Army team who beat UConn 52 to 21. That triple option was humming. They put up 397 rushing yards, total of 504 yards. Their quarterback Christian Anderson. 70 yards passing and a touchdown, plus two rushing touchdowns. I'm going to say this could be kind of a high-scoring game, but I'm going to say Army will have a little bit too much for Miami of Ohio to handle. All right, Boise State and Utah State, this should be definitely a shootout. Boise State, though, they lost a close game to Oklahoma State, 21-20. and uh, It was only their 11th home loss since 2000. Uh, Bachmeyer threw for 242 and one touchdown and one pick. Utah State had an it was an awesome game back and forth against Air Force. They ended up winning 49 to 45. Logan Bonner 262 passing, two touchdowns. Andrew Peasley 195 passing and three touchdowns. Calvin Tyler 128 rushing and two touchdowns. Devin Tompkins 10 catches, 193 and a touchdown. Brandon Bowling eight catches, 135 and two touchdowns. They put up 629 total yards of offense. This is going to go back and forth. Normally, I'm kind of leaning Utah State here. I mean, Boise State is, they're 1-2. and two. They haven't quite looked like Boise State. Yeah, they played a uh, good UCF and good Oklahoma State team. I'll go with Boise State until they show me they can lose to Mountain West teams. But th that'll be a really, really fun game to watch. Expect a lot, a lot of points in that game. 
Central Connecticut, Miami, Miami, Michigan State beat him 38 to 17. King passed for 388, two touchdowns and pit, two picks. Charleston Rambo had a game, 12 catches, 156, and two touchdowns. They turned it over four times, which did not help them. They should be able to blow out Central Connecticut and at least get in the win column. UMass and Coastal Carolina. UMass hasn't looked that bad the past couple of weeks. They've lost. They lost 42 to 28, but they put up 28 points in each of the last two games. They lost to Eastern Michigan. Um, Brady Olson though passed for 288, two touchdowns. Ellis Merriweather ran for 142. They did have 519 total yards of offense. Coastal Carolina. They had a, a close win against Buffalo, 28 to 25. Grayson McCall 232. And three touchdowns. Shamari Jones ran from 149 and a touchdown. I think Coastal Carolina, they should be on their teal turf at home. They should be able to beat UMass. UMass has shown they've been able to put up points, so this could be a little bit higher scoring than people expect. But I'm going to say Coastal Carolina wins this one. San Jose State and Western Michigan. San Jose State, they did not look very good against Hawaii. Even They did win 17-13, but it was very lackluster. Nick Starkle, 235, two touchdowns and a pick. They're placing a hot Western Michigan team who just, dis not destroyed Pitt, but beat Pitt 44-41. Caleb Ellaby, 337 passing and three touchdowns. Corey Crooms, eight catch catches, 161 and a touchdown. Sky Moore, 11 catches, 124 and a touchdown. They had 517 total. They forced three turnovers offensively. This could be a high scoring game, but I'm going to go with Western Michigan. They've looked pretty, uh, pretty good this year. I got them beating San Jose State. All right, Toledo and Ball State. Both teams lost to Mountain West teams last week. Toledo lost 22 to 6 to Colorado State. Uh, Carter Bradley, 254 passing. They only had 21 rushing yards in that loss. Ball State, they got smacked by Wyoming, 45 to 12. John Paddock, 82 passing yards in a pick. Drew Plitt, 60 passing yards in a pick. They turned it over three times. Again, another high scoring game. I think Toledo will be the one to bounce back and win that one. Texas State and Eastern Michigan. Texas State, they lost to 1AA Incarnate Word again, 42 to 34. Brady McBride, 278 passing, two touchdowns. They did force three turnovers in that game. Eastern Michigan beat UMass, 42 to 28. Ben Bryant, 298 passing and a touchdown. Jawan Hamilton, 122 rushing and a touchdown. Hassan Bedoun, six catches, 101. They put a 507 on offense. This could be, again, another high scoring possibly game, but I'm going to say Eastern Michigan ekes out the victory. Maine and NIU, and NIU got destroyed by a really good looking Michigan team, 63 to 10. Rocky Lombardi was terrible, 46 passing yards, one touchdown and pick. He did run for 72 yards, but they couldn't do anything. I think they, they, they'll bounce back and beat Maine. All right, Washington State and Utah, both coming off disappointing losses. Washington State was up 14 0 on USC, then lost 45 to 14. Jaden Delora, 117 passing, two touchdowns. They forced four turnovers, but they turned it over three times themselves. Uh, and they they got to take care of the ball if they want to beat Utah. Utah lost in triple overtime, 33-31 to to San Diego State. Cam Rising, Charlie Brewer started, was kind of bad, 104 passing and a pick. Cam Rising came in, 153 passing, three touchdowns, plus 46 rushing yards. And they had a punt return for a touchdown. I think Utah is going to be the one that bounces back and wins that game. So those are my noon games. Check out my other videos for my uh, primetime games, my midday games, and my NFL Sunday games. Peace.